from the depth instant tutorial today on instant tutorials we will take a look at steam engines for power generation please leave a like as well as steam turbines the steam engine section might look a little bit intimidating but it's not that hard and let's go through it we have a steam controller a steam boiler tubing to direct the steam into the piston and the piston that goes to a crankshaft that goes to a gearbox. This gearbox generates power. The small steam controller can be used with small boilers. The medium steam controller can be used with medium boilers. And the large steam controller, which is enormous, can be used with large boilers. That said, you cannot combine small with medium and large with medium or small with medium. You could do that a little bit before, but not anymore. You will need to use the proper controller for the proper boiler. The controller can be placed somewhere at the back. The size of the boiler will decide how many materials per second this thing can burn. That will also decide how much steam per second you can create. The pressure will always be 10 out of 10 and the pressure can only move along those values, 0 to 10. So the larger the boiler, the more materials per second it will be able to burn. When you're done with the boiler, you put a steam pipe at the end. The steam pipe will let the steam through and now you can see that pressure completely dropped. To stop all of the steam from leaking out in case of a breach, it can be a good idea to add veils. Inside this veil, make sure that you place it in the right direction using the arrow. Here you can see this little option, close when a breach is detected. And you can use that to stop a breach. You can add several veils to compartmentalize your steam setup if you have a huge steam engine so that only part of the engine can be steamless in case of a breach. If you have a big boiler it can be expensive to let all the steam out as it will take a lot of materials to build that pressure up. When the pressure is built up to 10, notice the values here, you can see that the materials per second went down to zero materials per second because we already have the pressure so we don't need to burn more material. It's only to maintain that pressure we need to burn the materials. So a bigger boiler is not always more expensive, as it is only more expensive when more steam is used. However, you should not have a larger boiler than you need, because it will take time to build up the pressure before the pressure is 10 out of 10. This for example have very low pressure and it's super slow. To increase this, we could add a bigger boiler. We increase the size of the boiler. Now you can see the engine speeds up much faster. If you would like to control the material burn per second, you can decrease the burn rate. This is however usually not needed as you should instead just regulate the size of your boiler to meet your needs. Let's build a medium steam engine. So to do that we'll need a medium gearbox. Inside the medium gearbox we'll find the medium crank, the medium piston and all the medium stuff that fits with this thing. You cannot combine the medium and the small in terms of axes and propellers and gearboxes and pistons. You'll need to keep to one of these systems. There we go, we can plonk down a medium gearbox just like that. Now we can add crankshafts. Crankshafts will let the pistons attach to. We also have cased crankshafts for some increased armor. So we add two crankshafts there and as you can see they are not connected. We can go out of here then we'll go to medium shaft and we can then add some shafts here to connect them up. If we want increased uh, armor we can use this thing instead. It's basically a sturdier shaft. Now we go into the medium gearbox again and we can go to pistons. These pistons, we have a little suction cap and they need to be lined up until they reach inside of there. 
So we plop it down there and we plop down this piston here. And now we can see they automatically align up to the crank here. Now we just need to connect up the steam here. So we go into steam piping and we can have here a little T division and a couple of corners. You can see there are small arrows here on the steam cylinder that basically tells you where the steam goes in and where it comes out. So if we add both of these to the input, we'll get a very powerful engine like that. This gearbox now generates power. To use that power, we will increase the power priority to maximum, just so it does get used over any other engines. To really tax our engine, we will add a little ECM jammer just to use more power. And now you can see, we added a lot of resistance in the medium gearbox, as you can hear. This means that uh, the gearbox generates power and it has more resistance now. And it now goes slower. Now we can see this gearbox generates power. 3214. And this power comes from the pistons. If we add more pistons, we can produce even more power. If we look here, the pressure is 10 out of 10 and the materials per second is 8 out of 22. That means we can utilize more of this pressure by adding more pistons. Great. If we have more pistons, then we will be able to generate more power using this gearbox. However, every gearbox has a maximum limit on how much power they can generate. But it's very high. Due to the size of this little engine, we are already limited uh, at our maximum value. But if we for some reason need this shaft to spin very quickly, if we for example would install a propeller or something on it, then we would probably need to limit the power creation. So if we go in here and limit the power creation to something lower than it can produce, we can see we can make it spin faster and that will get us better speeds. But Steamboat is for another tutorial. Both of these pistons are fed directly with the steam. So uh, they utilize all that pressure and we don't reuse the pressure. If we go here for example we can see that the pressure that exits here is 1 out of 10. And that can of course be reused. So if we go to our identical engine with a different connection of the tubes here. You can see that in it goes to this little piston and uh, here in the piston and cylinder uh, we take the output and we feed it into the other piston. Now this input pressure is 4 out of 10 so it's not very high but we're much more efficient in terms of materials per second. Here you can see that uh, we only produce 1670 power, as opposed to this one that produces 3200. It burns 8 materials per second, this burns 3. Almost. You can reuse the output on the steam several times, dependent on how high the pressure is. But usually it's only worth to reuse them one or in some cases two times. And you can actually take several outputs, so outputs from two of these cylinders and input them into a third. Let me do that. Ta-da! There we are. So we have the same setup like this system. It goes into two of the pistons like that and the output is then fed to a third piston. And now you can see that the output pressure of this piston is 0.7, so it's not worth recycling. But we get a lot of power from having one extra piston that uses that. So what's the difference? Well, by using this exhaust, we are now burning four materials per second while producing 2300 power. This thing produces 3200 power, so that's more, but we are using the double in terms of uh, materials per second, so it's much less efficient. 
Ok, great! Now we know how to make engine power with steam engines, but what if we need electric energy? Well, in that case, we'll go into the medium gearbox, find a medium wheel, slap on this little medium wheel here, find a medium shaft generator. It looks like this, so it has to be placed somewhere along those lines. If we go in here, it's basically a generator and we can see maximum kinetic to battery energy conversion. And we can limit that if we want to. To be able to charge batteries, we'll need a couple of them. Ok, great. But what if we only need electric power and we don't need to have this big setup just to generate some energy here with all this crankshaft setup and uh, gearbox and stuff like that to produce power? Well, in that case, we can bypass it all by using turbines. Turbines come in different sizes um, and we'll make a little medium turbine. The easiest way, however, if we want a small turbine, is to slap on a small turbine and a small turbine generator and then just have an input there and you'll get some power. If we have a larger setup, however, we can use the medium turbine as well. So we go to the medium turbine generator, we can add that there. And then we have a medium turbine generator connection, like that. And then we'll have uh, mills and windows, it doesn't really matter which you use, and then a input pipe thing that you'll need. And now the steam uh, gets fed into here, you can see that the pressure is building up, but we're, we're using a, a lot of pressure still, it's uh, still 22 materials per second and now it goes down to something smaller and then you can go in here we can see max steam conversion processed kinetic loss and all those types of stats it's better if it's larger but it shouldn't be larger than it has to be and you can again use the small uh, turbine generator even with a big boiler or medium boiler so here we can see how much battery we can use. To use this electric to get power, you'll need an electric engine on top of a battery. And you can see that uh, this thing needs a high priority to be used and it produces 1600 power. Very nice. And here we can see that this thing charges uh, the battery and will definitely have more than enough charge from this setup. So we don't need to make it bigger in order to power this engine. So very nice, that's how to set up that. And that should get you started with steam engines and steam turbines in from the depth. And if that was helpful, please subscribe and I'll see you in future videos. This is your host, Jim Odesen, signing out.